Good morning. This is quite a deal. <laughs> uh, I don't remember if it was about two weeks ago I called Scott and said I wanted to do a message. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> but I did what I've researched and stuff. The pastors and stuff, uh, they go through a lot. They're studying the Bible. That song that they just sang, that could be a message right there, in my opinion. Uh, I like to start off with something funny. I hope you guys will let me do that. There was this couple, they was in the swing, going back and forth. They've been married for a lot of years. She said, you know, I remember when you used to hold my hand. So he reached over and held her hand. And she said, I remember when you kissed me on the cheek. And he reached over and kissed her on the cheek. She said, I remember when you used to nibble on my ear. He got up and walked away. And she said, where are you going? He says, I'm going to get my teeth. <laughs> Linda's not smiling about that one. <laughs> okay. Well... I want to talk to you about, well, we ought to pray for the message, I guess. Uh, forgiving others and not judging others. That's what my title, my message is going to be. And I've got about, uh, no, about five different book chapters in the Bible there. So if you would, let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the word that you want me to speak to the congregation. I, uh, it's been on my heart for a long time, and I just want to speak to the, speak this and hope it brings a blessing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have any of you ever had a disagreement with a family member with with uh, friends that's that's where I've been struggling a long time I uh, there's things in life that I've made choices and they haven't been uh, they haven't been agreeing to some people and I I've learned to, uh, the Lord's taught me to forgive a lot more than I used to. And this church has been a big part of that. I mean, I, I remember, you know, I used to come here back when my kids were little. And there was disputes and stuff, and we left. And, but it's, the church forgives, and they let you come back. And I remember... Dawn told me one time when I come back, I didn't vote on something. She said, you're still a member. I said, really? I said, I figured if I left, I wasn't a member anymore. She said, no, you're still a member. And that's, that's not, I mean, that's nice. It's, it really is. It just shows how much of a loving church we have. I've been, I haven't been to too many churches. Like my family, they took me to the Christian church, but my dad wasn't real I wouldn't say, I knew he knew the Lord, but I don't think he's real religious and didn't take me as a kid to go to church. I didn't start going to church until I got married back in uh, 82. And I was scared to go to church. <coughs> so, uh, but anyway, uh, like Mark 11.25 is a, uh, one chapter I've picked out, if I can find it with my shaking. I was, I, I was up on a podium one time, up in high school, FFA convention, and somebody says, what's that knock? And I said, that's my knees. <laughs> so, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven 
may forgive you and your sins. So, you're, you know, you're not supposed to have anything against anybody. You're supposed to treat your neighbors the way you'd want to be treated yourself. Um, Luke 11, 4. And that's kind of the Lord's prayer. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and leads us not into temptation. That's pretty powerful, I feel. I, uh, I had a guy I used to work with and uh, been friends with him for two, three years. And I, he offered me a job and uh, I thought about it but it didn't have insurance. And uh, I told him, I said, I can't leave where I'm at because I need insurance. And, and then I, I broke our friendship. You know, so I, to me, was he a true friend or was he just hurt so bad that I wouldn't, you know, uh, come over to work for him? I mean, we, we make decisions in our life to uh, to better ourselves, or we think is right. I've learned a lot more in the last few years. I pray a lot more about it instead of just making a hasty decision. I've made a lot of hasty decisions. Uh, and, you know, it's hard to understand the love that God has for us, how He hung on that cross for us. I'm not worthy of that. And I'm not, and I feel like I'm not, you know, when I hurt somebody, I'm not worthy of their forgiveness. Just because that's just the way I was built. I, uh, you know, I guess a lot of this is talking about me, and I hope that's not wrong, but I mean, it's just, you know, it's just kind of the words, it's there. The Colossians uh, 3. 13. I've got to find it. Sorry. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you and all and all over all those virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. I mean, all these are powerful for forgiveness. Uh, last one, or one of them I have is Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other just as God or just Christ God forgave you. I mean it, it just talks so much in the Bible about forgiving. And I I can stand here and say um, that I I don't have any grievances against anybody. I mean I really can. I've I've caused grievances against people, you know, but but the Lord has mellowed my heart that I don't, I don't, I can't think of anybody, even though that they don't like me or whatever, or don't have them forgive me. That I, I'm, I, you know, I'm hurt, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't know what the word I want to use is, huh? Yeah, yeah, I don't hold a grudge. It's that's just waste of time. Waste of time. It, it really is. I uh, I know my family. Uh, you know we're going through some things, but the Lord will take care of it. The way I look at it. So I want to uh, I want to jump into judgment a little bit.
And I've only got one chapter for that. It's Romans fourteen ten through fourteen <clears throat> thirteen. It says, You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess God. So then each of us will give an account to him, of himself to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. Have you ever walked up to somebody, met him for the first time, and think, they're not like me, they're not like us? I told Terry I was going to use him as an example, and this is what I'm going to use. I met Terry a year ago, the first time at Tiffany and I come here for the soup supper. And I saw a guy and cut off, you know, just dressing like a Harley got a biker. And I thought, wow, that's, he's not dressed like everybody else. But after we got to, well, Terry Fowler, not Terry Yoder. I, I, <laughs> I wonder if, I better clarify that. So anyway, after we got to talking, I would, I would adopt him as my brother, is all I'm going to say. Because it's just, you know, judging people, we do it without even thinking. And, I, and I've done it. I, I'm, I'm a sinner. I've, I've judged people, I, and sometimes you come across it, you still do. Whenever Tiffany and I went to New Orleans, we saw the homeless tents. It's, it's sad. I mean, they're just, I mean, there's an acre of them. And those poor, poor folks, you know, say, the beggar on the street, you say, why don't you get a job? You don't know their circumstances. You know, you just, you just don't know. And you put a pre-judgment notion in your head. And that's not what the Lord wants us to do. Um, I, you know, I've, I've asked for forgiveness for many things. I know I've got, uh, I know I've got a beautiful wife now. And probably the happiest I've been in my 60 years been on this earth because she loves me for me she didn't care she said I don't care if we live in a cardboard box and that's love there but the thing I want to I got a thing here I want to close with is something I do every morning and I never used to do this but before I go to work I listen to Joyce Meyer and this kind of I know she's more for the ladies, but you, the, even the men can get a lot of good out of her messages. And I thought, back in the day, I thought she was just a person that was causing the woman to rebel against a man. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, she, she's, taught, she's taught me a lot. She really has. She's taught me about relationships, and, you know, I know what she went through, or I mean, what she told she went through. But she, it's, I just get a lot out of that. And I listen to Joel a lot. Uh, I don't know, some, a lot of people say he's too, he doesn't think there's any bad out there, I guess. And then uh, David Jeremiah, you know, listen to him. But to 
to get past all this stuff, you got to be filled with God's Word and think like God does and try to go out and in the community and uh, live like the Lord would want us to live and show people we're different. I mean, like I say, if I, if I had an enemy that his house burnt down, I'd be there to see what he needed. Just because that's just what we're supposed to do. If we, can, if we can get them in the church, that's great too. But the thing I want to close with is I've got something I writ, have written down. Confronting the criticism and judgment of other people becomes easier when we remember that ultimately it is his before our master that we stand or fall. In the end, we will answer to God alone. And I... I believe that's true. So I'll close with prayer and then the ladies come up for their last song. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have here to study your word. I thank you for the words that you've given me. I hope it blesses someone in this wherever it the blessing may be. In all things we ask your name. Amen. Like a lamb.